Welcome back everyone, Coma Call here, Grand Theft Auto 5, and we are going to call Dr. Friedlander. Doc, hey, it's me. Michael, que pasa, amigo? Not good. Things have been pretty fucked up. You seem particularly confused, Mikey. Tell me why. <sighs> Things are bad, Doc. Really bad. Tell me all about it. Sharing is winning. I've been really bad, Doc. But I'm suffering. I mean, I've lost everything that matters. I'm hanging with a maniac who's certain to kill me if the government doesn't do it first. I want my family back. Well, I want them to be different. And me to be different. The world to be different. Obsessing about the things we've thrown away is an easy avoidance technique. Have you acted out in any other ways? <sighs> Sometimes I'm fine, Doc. Sometimes I'm a fucking maniac. It's like I'm two different people. And I don't like either one of them. I think split personality is the least of your problems. You're deranged. I really just want to be happy, Doc. That's so bad. Okay, okay. Anything else? What about sex, Michael? Well, you know, I've, I've been a good boy in that regard. I'm making real progress, Doc. We are making progress, Michael. You're finally listening to me. Great. I really feel like you're judging me harsh here, Doc. You know? I'm doing my best. The thing is, Michael, you know me. I'm not a sugar coder or a script writer. I mean, we tried a full range of pharmaceutical solutions a couple of years ago, and that went nowhere we want to go back to. Agreed? Agreed. I ain't doing that again. Pissing myself, crying, sleeping in dinner, howling in the middle of the night. Fuck that shit. Maybe we got the doses a little wrong. You're going to have to get yourself under control. Listen, next time we meet, perhaps we should meet back at my office. But, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm afraid face-to-face -face sessions have got a little more expensive. I thought you said phone sessions were more expensive. Well, they were, but I realized that wasn't fair, so I raised the price on face-to-face. -face. I'm sure you understand. And if you don't, maybe you should. Be well. What a butt. I hate that he keeps on jacking the price up. Alright, I'm not quite sure where I can park and have the car kept. Who cares? Mr. DeSanto, good to see you. What's good? I'm fine. I'm the one that's fine. What's good? I don't know if it's gay or not. I don't even know what month it is. City of Saints and Struggle lost scammers for it and trouble. Where's Trevor? Yeah, okay. Well, I'm coming by. House later. Your shit better be straight. I thought Trevor was supposed yeah, to be here. I'm gonna see you real soon.
point. I was sure there was a Trevor mission here. I asked for your number, Damn, but they took my phone. Alright, let's try this again. I gotta give me some cush at the ride trip on this dude. I feel They only play like six songs here. It's kinda making me crazy. Sounds like he's talking abnormally loud because I have music turned off. With the music on, he talks just about the right volume. Hey, before you ask, the fridge is broken. That's all right. I've had enough of your hospitality already. I have changed my ways, all right? Huh? Yeah, I'm done with that crazy shit, all right? I want to square things away with Meriwether, make sure the agency ain't coming back after us, and then do one last big score, and then you get to go back with your family. Me, I'm just going to live here. I'm going to run this, this good business showing people a good time. B bust Brad out of prison, and then, you know, happy. <laughs> so how'd you come by this place anyway? I've had it for ages. So you must know Leon, the old manager. Leon? I didn't know. Yeah, whatever, man. So what's going on here? What's going on is the big one. A long, long time ago in a faraway place, there were three guys. Michael, Trevor, and Lester. And Brad. Uh, yeah. Sure, Brad was there sometimes as well. I mean, there were other guys, though, too. So, uh... Anyway, we uh, robbed and lied and we hurt people. Pretty much lived a low-life kind of existence. But always dreaming of one thing and one thing only. The big one. The big one. The, the big, big one. one! What is the big one? <laughs> the Union Depository. Around 200 million in gold bricks, all taken from kindly Uncle Sam, who will spend the rest of our lives being hunted by government officials if we live through the attempt, but, but it'll be my, uh, our masterpiece. So, gentlemen, let's do our civic duty and get out there and find some gainful employment. This way. Let's go. Big one. I think we found Leon. I'd rather be in the shoes of Michael. It'll happen faster. Driving as Trevor will take forever to get out there. Oh, we need to be up top. Sorry. Hey, we are uh, taking the temperature. Yeah, you know, getting a feel for it. Security, exit routes, general vibe. All right. That doesn't look like much. Man, security looks light. We send in a couple of sprung niggas, clap, clap. What are you talking about, Frank? Oh, I see it. Man, getting in the door is easy. It's a standard bank. It's getting underground that's hard. Ain't that where the metal's kept? Right. Now we gotta stop outside the Arcadia Center down on Alta Street. We can get a view of the back from there. Hey man, you might not notice it, but I picked up a few things rolling with you. 
I mean, there's times I think I gotta be the senior partner in the group. From the way you and Trevor behave. Ah, sorry. There's history there. Yeah, it still ain't fully been explained to me, though. No? But well, remind me to go over with you again sometime. But not now. Look, dawg, light again, man. Yeah, fucking eerie, ain't it? Man, you think they put more than one motherfucker on our national fucking reserve? Yeah, huh? Well, maybe we really are broke. You mentioned a uh, job before help you with I ain't even talked to Mike about it yet but he's gonna be on board he's obligated what is it ain't it obvious busting Brad out of the clink why do you talk to Michael about it oh fine shit I was gonna pay you man when there ain't an obvious profit in something you're a hard guy to motivate You're the one who keeps talking about the schedule, Lest. Come on! Thirteen thirty. We're an hour down, two to go. Mike's observations fit with your scheme. So far, yeah. The, the security's internal rather than external. It's quiet enough that any disturbance is going to get picked up immediately. Be careful not to get too close to the prison. We'll trip an alarm. Good boy. Don't want him jumpy for the breakout. Ah, yeah. Huh. What those two don't know is there's a special team of cops on standby 24-7 waiting on a signal from the UD. Won't go out on any other call. And it's never been hit. Man, those guys must get bored. They may be cops, but they work for the government. There's nothing government workers love more than to accept for doing nothing. Oh, yeah, that spying on innocent people. Mmm, getting paid to do nothing and spying on innocent people. Now, who does that remind me of? Anyway, if you want to hit the vault in a way that people will notice, the key will be to divert the security team. Divert it? You said they hold out for calls from the UD, and that's it. They do, so we'd have to hit it twice, once to distract them and once to get it done. You're gonna find someone willing to get caught hitting a super bank just as a distraction. I was thinking, Michael, it might appeal to his ego. Oh, what am I saying? We got the perfect guy for it. Come in, Michael! We have a visual on the convoy! Keep with them, T. Do whatever Les needs you to do. We need to stay with them and find the place to ambush! What kind of ambush spot are we looking for? I tend to wait in the jaw and catch them with their drawers down, but I guess that won't work here. No, it, uh, won't. We're looking for somewhere with cover for us and no escape routes for them. Ah, the same principle as a men's room. Yeah, uh, I guess. <laughs> Same for 
short periods of time. Oh, there's ways to make minutes go by. Okay. You would think they would get a little suspicious of a helicopter hovering, kind of sticking with them. Expecting you 30 seconds ago. Tell that to the traffic. <laughs> All right. Onion 86 in the building. So we'll get him started flying and switch over to Michael. Michael is probably going to be headed back to the club. At least that would be my guess. Oh, nope. Taking Franklin back to his house. Hey, so how you feeling about this? Feeling pretty good. We got Lester planning it. He'll get us options. There's you, a guy I know I can depend on. And then there's Trevor. Ah, yeah, Trevor will get it done. And will he? I hope so, man. I hope he holds it together. Hey, you ain't done too good of a job at that yourself, you feel me? Yeah, well, I ain't pissed off hillbillies. Bikers, a Mexican gang, some Chinese gangsters, and a private army, okay? So there's that. Yeah, but you just pissed off the FIB and the IAA. And your family, man. You know what? I met Amanda, and I know who scares me the most. <laughs> Point taken. So you gonna tell me about this Brad dude and the deal with the FIB? What happened in North Yankton back in the day anyway? This ain't the time. Man, we're about to go in together on the biggest job ever being pulled. There ain't ever gonna be a better time to fill me in on this shit. It's complicated, all right? Fuck it, I'm gonna ask Trevor. Don't ask Trevor. Shit, man, you sound shady, dawg. Real shady. We'll talk. All right? Just later. All right. Never know when they're going to stop talking. <laughs> For a second, those textures looked like... Why doesn't he have any cars here? Hey, when he's got something, Lester will be in touch. So 
so I was supposed to fly through a tunnel with them. Hmm. I don't know. Before I go, I'm going to switch back to Franklin and show you his car. Well, cars. There's one of them that I haven't seen in daylight yet. I think it's gonna look pretty weird. Man, I need to get some health food in this damn house. You said that last time I came in here. He still hasn't done it. Alright, so I've got a car in the garage. I have no idea where his buffalo is. I think this looks so gaudy. It is a chrome coil with a carbon fiber hood, carbon fiber um, roof. The rest of it's all chrome. Fully uh, beefed up. I mean, it's it's got like the racing transmission, racing suspension, racing everything that can be modified. This thing's sick. But I made it chrome. I hate the color. But I made that just because I wanted to see what it would look like. Anyway, that'll be it for this part. Next part, uh, we'll jump back to Michael and see about doing his next mission. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Tune to the next part, and I will see you then.